This place felt more like home than where I was living in the States. Meet Rob and Nadine, worn down chiropractors who escaped the rat race and ran off to Costa Rica. We said, if we're gonna do this, let's just put it all out on the table. When we came here, the people are really friendly. There was no going back at that point. So the only way to make this work was going to be on a budget. They found ways to live well on very little money. This little baby is $6 a month in gas. In their adopted beach town, they discovered what was really important to them. It's not only just the activity and the exercise that we enjoy, but everywhere around us, it's just beautiful. Whoa. And along with their change of lifestyle came new passions. As my journey unfolded, that's when all this creative energy came. And so did the book. And a true appreciation of life and each other. We were tossed into a whole new life. It was like being children again. And we kind of just rediscovered ourselves and rediscovered each other. Caucus, Costa Rica, and I'm on my way to meet Rob and Nadine, former chiropractors from the Northeast who moved down here five years ago to enjoy the good life. They figured out how to be happier than a billionaire while surviving on only $1,200 a month in paradise. So let's go meet them and learn more about how they manage this luxurious yet affordable lifestyle. My name's Rob. I'm Nadine. We live in Wacus, Costa Rica. Come on in, have Thanks. a seat. Join us. Would you like a cup of coffee or anything? Uh, I'm okay. This is beautiful. Poor Avida, huh? Yeah, this is how you guys start your mornings out here. Every yeah, morning. pretty much cup every morning. Coffee. I'm from Linden, New Jersey. My husband's from Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Uh, we went to the same school, uh, New York Chiropractic College, and uh, I always found my wife to be beautiful. And so I asked her out about 150 times. And I said no, 150 times. And then on the 151 <laughs> time, she decided to say I said yes. Yes. And we've been in love ever since. How did you guys get down here? How did you end up in this beautiful jungle paradise? We, we just were working really hard and uh, working all the time. We both opened up practice, 10 hour days, 11 hour days. From the outside, we were living the American dream. We had two cars, a nice house, two successful businesses. This became very heavy on us. And stressful. You know and if you think it was the lifestyle it was taking its Yeah, toll definitely. On the work. Our goals were more driven by um, economic success and, you know, um, wanting things. You're not enjoying your life, so then you say, well, I'll buy this 250 gallon saltwater aquarium. That's going to make me happy. And you're like, well, that didn't really make me happy, so okay, let's make it a reef aquarium. Then you're miserable and you're even this, worse off. I was reading this book about Buddhism, and he's upside down, as I'm reading this, and he's upside, Rob's upside down in the fish tank. Scraping, Scraping algae uh, off a rock with, now a, this with is, a toothbrush. This is the only day we have on Sunday. It takes around eight hours to do this. And I opened the book, I said, wow, you know, it says in here, possessions cause suffering. And you know and something? And he got out of that was, fish tank. It was like a light bulb went off in my head. I was like, oh my God, that's so true. The more junk I have, the more miserable I am. So one day I came home with this crazy idea that we were gonna quit our jobs and move to Costa Rica. Yeah, I thought it was crazy. She really came around to the idea when I got sick. I worked 12 hours a day, she worked 12 hours a day. We barely seen each other. We couldn't eat well, we couldn't take care of ourselves. I was overweight, I was feeling sick. I went to the doctor, I ended up in the hospital for a week. No wow. one can figure out what was wrong. I remember sitting next to him on the, at the hospital bed and I just said, I promise you, we won't live like this anymore. Then you realize you actually have to change your life. And that's the part that we started thinking, yeah, okay, we need a little bit of a plan, we need a little faith in each other, and we'll figure it out as we go. And at that point, figuring it out was better than staying where I was. And how did you choose Costa Rica? We said, if we're gonna do this grand adventure, let's just put it all out on the table. And let's just put, you know, even all of Central America out on the table. What we liked about Costa Rica is when we came here, the people are really friendly. And I said, wow, I, I wanna live like this. It was our first trip here that I knew. This place felt more like home than where I was living in the States. Remember when we, we finally said, okay, we're gonna do this, and we had said, either it's gonna go really good 
or it's going to go really, really bad. bad. We'll be home in six months. And, yeah. there's, and to make sure it goes really good, we'll sell everything. Yeah, yeah. we I weren't didn't... one of those people who kept one foot in the States and one foot here. It had to work. <laughs> there was no, you know, no, no going back at that point. The house was gone, we were the business all, we was were gone. We were all in. And now we live here. My fish tank is the ocean. We got rid of all the possessions. It had no, it had no place in our life. Well, and it still looks like you guys lead a pretty nice life. You're Absolutely. living in a nice house. Yeah. And... Would you like us to show you around yeah, I'd and love see, to see it, it. how we do this this crazy, crazy thing? Crazy plan of ours. <laughs> I remember what she told me. She was moving down to Costa Rica. I'm like, okay, do you have enough money that you have put away? And I hope that they had money. I don't get in their business, but I hope that they had some put away. And I assumed that it would last them. So come on in. So Savannah, this is our house. It's lovely. I don't think it's spacious enough. <laughs> <laughs> we left at 37. So we didn't have enough money to last us forever. So the only way to make this work was, was going to be on a budget. It's $150 a month. Get out. What we did is we found this house and we made a deal with the owner. He needed someone to uh, be a caretaker for the house, to do some gardening. Take care if things break, if uh, something happens to the plumbing. Somebody needs to be living in the house. So this is the garden. Well, the garden is a work in progress, but eventually this will all be thick with flowers. Life really just thrives here. When I first got here, I was in such terrible shape. If I walked across the beach, I was out of breath. I felt like I had to sit down. My husband loves to work out, so instead of joining a gym, I call it the jailhouse workout, the no job, no kids workout. <laughs> People think, well, you just sit around all day. You don't have any goals in life. We still have goals. Um, this is the gym. This is my gym. One of my biggest goals was to get myself healthy again. You start in this position, and you come on down, and there you have it. Jeez Louise. Now I would suggest a helmet you, with yeah. this. Do you do this, Nadine? I do the push-ups, and but on a chair, purge, lower, she... lower on a chair. And you can start so... your own personal training business while you're down here too. Hey, I try not to work as hard as I can. What are you trying <laughs> to do to me here? It's extremely rewarding for me to feel like I did again when I was 20 years old. How much weight have you lost since you moved down here? 40 to 60 pounds. Honestly, I never dreamed that I would get in this shape again. I felt I would be overweight, unhealthy, arthritic for the rest of my life. It turns out it was just the lifestyle and the diet and, and the lack of exercise. I really do feel as good as I did ever in my life. Nadine's moving down to Costa Rica. Little on the crazy side for her as far as she goes and as far as, uh, you know, what I know about her. I've seen Rob's zone. I want to see Nadine's zone. I, I definitely had my doubts at, at first, you know, you don't speak Spanish. <laughs> you know, how the hell are you going to get around? Well, come on inside. But uh, I knew she'd be okay. Uh, if that's, if she got down there and ultimately decided that's what she wants to do or at least give it a go, I, I figured she'd be fine. So this is where I write. What was great about living here is the more I was able to decompress, the more creative I became. And all these funny adventures that I was having, I said, you know, it would be great to document that and write them down and write them down in, in a funny, silly way. I always love to write. And if you just have a really good sense of humor, things are just hilarious, especially when you don't know the language. So I just started writing the funny stories down and I would share them on my blog or I would email them out and people started sharing them in inter-office email. And it just grew and it just became bigger than I thought it could ever be. So as my journey unfolded, so did the book. And it's been doing great. What's the book called? Happier Than a Billionaire. <laughs> Quitting my job, moving to Costa Rica and living the zero hour work week. Yes. We used to go back and forth, I'm like, are you happy you had? We're happier than a millionaire. Like, no, 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 we're happier than a billionaire. And, and people love this. And people love it. It's the number one book for Costa Rica and Central America. And, and you had no idea when you moved down here, I'm going to write a book, I'm going to talk about my experience. That was all something that just came in the process. It just unfolded. This place really has a way of unlocking your creativity. Whether, whether you're a photographer, a musician, a writer, it really has a way of bringing it out and enhancing it and bringing it to the surface. Yeah. And until, for me, until I unloaded it all, that's when all this creative energy came. And it came fast. And I'm lucky that I found a passion that I like to do every day. You have a best-selling book. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> That's amazing. When we landed in Costa Rica, there was a lot of things we needed to do. We didn't know the language. We had to find a place to live. We had to get a Costa Rican driver's license. So there were a lot of things on our list that 
at the beginning felt like obstacles. You know, there was a lot to figure out when we moved here, and the car was the number one thing. Gas can be as much as $6 a gallon, so we needed to come up with a plan that would help offset the cost of gas. Do you want to hit the road and see how we do it? Yes! Scooter trip. I'm totally inspired now. Scooter trip, scooter Show trip. Me. All right. Our big SUV, that's around $80 in gas. This little baby is $6 a month in gas. <laughs> so we take this, we stick this on, we say a prayer, and we go food shopping. Even the grocery store is an adventure. <laughs> you really need to learn from the local people how they do it. People will deliver roofing material on a motorcycle, so I figured if they can do that, I can get my groceries home on a motorcycle. Okay, let's start maybe staples like milk. Okay, wherever you want to go. So the only way to make this work was, was going to be on a budget. We decided to focus on what we felt was important. Which that was $1,200 every month, and we had to stick to that. Okay, so not bad. A bag of pasta is a dollar. That had to go towards rent, food, Healthcare. and we knew that we would have to uh, make, make do with in yeah, certain ways. Yeah, because we weren't doing this at 70. Here's peanut butter. Okay, here's a great one. This is six, seven dollars and fifty cents. All the imported goods are double the price, so we have to be really careful because it is tempting to go down an aisle and want to pick the things that you're used to eating. As right alluring now? as the cute little bunny is, <laughs> he's not worth seven dollars oh, today. Okay. This is the produce section. Okay, cabbage. Quanto per kilo? Okay. One dollar a kilo. Quanto okay. per kilo? Potatoes are good. Quanto for the papas? We have to try to find products that are made here. Mostly eat things that are fruits and vegetables. Why don't we get this as dessert for this week? Mm -hmm. And this is great because this is what we'll snack on. We won't snack on cookies or chips because they're too expensive here. So we'll just buy the local fruit and that'll be our dessert. And the money you save here, you like if you if you save enough, then you get to spend it on activities, recreational Kayaking, stuff. Kayaking, jet skiing. So let's save. save. I want to go do some That's fun right. stuff. Exactly. Let's do it. I like your style. <laughs> You're thinking like me, so that. So this is one of the things that my husband and I love to do. And I would rather do something like this than spend $7 on a jar of peanut butter because we moved to Costa Rica to do things like this, to have fun and have an adventure and be active. Great, well, let's hit this trail. I'm ready. All right. You know, when I, when I lived in the States, I never wanted to get out of bed. I would hit the snooze button. I would think of all the things I had to do that day, and I want to go back to sleep. Now, I like to be able to get up in the morning, look at her, say, we don't have no plans, what do you want to do? I don't know, let's go, let's go snorkeling. There's so much that's great about living It's an in Costa active Rica. country. Mountain biking in Costa Rica! It's not only just the activity and the exercise that we enjoy, but everywhere around us, it's just beautiful. Well, I know why we didn't buy the peanut butter now. <laughs> Money is so that you can provide yourself and your family with the things that you want to enjoy in life. It doesn't take billions of dollars to enjoy the best things in life. The best things in life are a beautiful sunset, a great meal, uh, time with a loved one, and those things cost relatively little. Is it cocktail time? Yeah, I think it's time for cocktails for sure. I think everyone deserves a cocktail. Yeah. Oh, this is the perfect spot. Yes. I've had such an amazing day, but it's also nice to see you guys Gracias. relax. We've been on the go, on the go. It's nice to just take in all this beauty. Yeah, we do a lot of fun things, but we also find time to just go to these really amazing beaches and just wind down and just enjoy the things that brought us here. Well, cheers to that. Happy to... Pura Vida, salute. Pura Vida, salute. And how was your relationship before you came to Costa Rica, before you decided to make the move down here, what was it like? It's difficult to work 12-hour days and come home and 
be pleasant to each other and kind to each other, and we were like ships passing in the night. When people found out we were going, I, I believe most of them thought we could never start over. They, they would think it's normal to be unhappy. Yeah. This is truly yeah, how every, life is. Everybody's miserable. Everybody yeah. comes home. That's what they home. said, remember? Your every, friend said that. Everybody's yeah, miserable. Yeah, he said, what are you complaining about? Everybody's overweight. Everybody's, everybody's miserable. miserable. Everybody gets Nobody's sick. healthy. Yeah. Nobody's happy. Everyone argues with their yeah. wife. So what are you, what's different about you? Why should you be happy? We're all miserable. <laughs> you, should all be, you should be miserable with us for the rest of your life. And we just, that wasn't good enough for me. How did the relationship change once you got down here? I think instantly, like that. We were back, we were back where we were all those years ago. We were tossed into a whole new life. It was like being children again. Every, everything was a new experience. The language was a new experience. The food was a new experience. And we kind of just rediscovered ourselves and rediscovered each other in the process. I never lived in the moment. I lived in the past or in the future. So I think that's what Costa Rica taught us, is that it's just now. Just live in the present, live in the moment, and you'll find happiness. I can definitely cheers to that, you cheers guys. <laughs>
with that being said, I don't think we're in a rush like we would have been in our mindset when we lived back home. There's no rush anymore to do anything. We're happy today, we're gonna to be happy tomorrow. So this will be our future, but we'll take our time with it. We won't rush it. Wow, this place is really beautiful, guys. One of the perks of living here is we meet a lot of people from all around the world. And tonight, one of our friends is having a party. Rob is going to play in his band, and we're going to have some cocktails. All right, I'm ready. They definitely are living the dream. They've adjusted their life, they're having fun, living on a budget that suits not having to spend their whole life working to hopefully get there one day. It is their dream and I, I truly believe they have, they have found it. Our goals are making people laugh with her book and enhancing people's lives. Sharing my songs with my friends and family. That's what we were born to do. That's what we were meant mm -hmm. to be. And we were stuck in a life that, that didn't allow us to explore that act. If there's someone out there who's unhappy, I think you need to really look at what it is that's making you unhappy and change it. There's an adventure out there for everyone. Just jump right into it. Treat life like an adventure. Get that spirit back you had when you were a kid. Just go out and enjoy yourself every day with your friends. I think that's what we want to do for I the rest of our I think that's what lives. Costa Rica gave us. I'm actually happy for her. The thing that she has that I strive for at some point is just to have that freedom. Every step that we took led us here. It was like the puzzle just fit, and Costa Rica was that last piece that you put right in the middle. I'm the happiest I've ever been. I can never imagine living anywhere else. Wouldn't you like to quit your job and live the life you've always dreamed of? You're really living the dream, I would imagine, the expat dream. I feel more free here than I do in the States. This is it, man. Yeah. This yeah. is the life. Join me, Savannah Jane Buffett, as I follow two buddies from college who quit their grueling office jobs and moved down to St. John to be bartenders in paradise. Now they're not just serving drinks, they've created the number one microbrew in the Caribbean. I looked out and there was about 30 cubicles. And at that moment, I said, I can't. I knew I wanted to roll the dice and that I wanted to take a break from what I was doing. Nice place to live, don't you think? Not bad. It was a very surreal feeling because this is all new to me. This is going to be my new home. At that point, we knew we were all in. They're the lucky guys, and they make beer for a living on an island. It's just two guys hanging out in the Caribbean and, and brewing some great beer and, you know, living the dream, I guess. Pharrell Williams here. Hi, I'm Joy Bryant. I'm Eric Ripper. I'm Tom Colicchio. I'm Dr. Frank Lipman. The host of On the Table. The host of Across the Board. Host of Artist Talk. Host of Hooked Up. Host of the show, Be Well Week, Be Well Weekend on the Reserve channel. It's only on Reserve. Did you know that you can follow my show on social media sites like Facebook? Follow us on Twitter. If you're a fan of my show, hit the like button. All of the above. Share me with your friends. Treat yourself. You know, check out a new episode of my show, Hooked Up. And if you want to leave comments, feedback, ideas, whatever, love to hear from you. Leave a comment. And if you don't want to miss the show, be sure to subscribe. The one that's like down here, or is it here? Uh, somewhere down here. Thanks for watching the Reserve channel. Only on YouTube. Hear me, please. Throw caution to the wind and ask yourself what rules. Mm -hmm.